in this video, I wanted to take a look at some of the products that are going to be coming out over the next few months. We all know notoriously this time of the year is when all of the big hockey manufacturers are going to be releasing new skates, new sticks, new protective, pretty much new everything. Now, while we're on the notion of this, of course, you can't help but come across some of the pages online that leak information, that leak catalogs, so you can see what the products look like that are coming out. Now, this isn't something that I'm a big fan of. I would rather work with the manufacturers and do things on a timescale that works for them. Like the video that we just dropped, which was very, very early on the FT6 Pros, but that was done with the consent of the manufacturer. We didn't just do that for the sake of doing that. But on the notion of that, something I see repeated in the comments constantly is, so-and-so is copying so-and-so, that's just an imitation of this. And I believe it kind of feels like we're under the assumption, some of us, that in this industry, every release, every tech product that drops in hockey should be completely original, organic, and have no similarities, or you could say, but no paying homage to anything else that's out there. Now, in reality, copying isn't only essential, it's also something that happens just throughout industries in general especially if we look at the automotive industry you can clearly see when one manufacturer has imitated another one's design now in my opinion i'm completely okay with a manufacturer copying another manufacturer's either design or tech providing they copy the good stuff but more importantly providing they also kind of put their own spin on it and are doing so to give us the consumers something that we need something that we want something that we're going to benefit from on the ice now, anyone that studies business is going to be very familiar with the term second mover advantage. Essentially, it's not always advantageous to be the first one to bring something to market because what happens is your competitors can bear witness to what you've done, make necessary tweaks to either improve the product, or they can even, in some cases, use your own marketing techniques to benefit themselves. Sometimes bringing a product to the market second can have numerous advantages and in some cases be much, much more effective than being the first one to bring something to the market. A great example of second mover advantage in hockey is if we look at blade holders or skate holders. Not so long ago, Barrow released their holder that was the light speed edge. It had a trigger, allowing players to be able to switch out their steel in a matter of seconds by the boards. Bauer was the first to do this, and it was groundbreaking at the time. Everyone wanted one because it made so much sense. No more having to dismantle half the skate to be able to get to the blade to simply change it out. Now, shortly after this, CCM released their version. Although they were late to the party by releasing their second, their blade holder, the excess, which had a dial instead of a trigger, secured the blade to the holder much more securely and was completely toolless and didn't require any additional leverage to be able to get the blade to pop out of the holder. Now, while CCM released their second, this is a great example that shows the company that releases theirs first doesn't always have the most advantages. Sometimes the companies that drop the product second, or sometimes you could say in air quotes late, can have more advantages than those that came first. Now, that being said, it's always nice when manufacturers create something completely organic and new. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be dropping over the next few months. A lot of the products we actually have in the studio right now, and we're filming content for you guys on them. But you can't help but notice similarities with one product and another. Or in other words, notice that one manufacturer has done something that you've seen previously on another manufacturer. Now, what I wanted to find out from yourselves is who do you think is kind of the king of, for example, skates? at this moment in time because if you asked me that question a few months back my answer would have been incredibly different from what it is right now manufacturers are constantly battling against each other to see who gets the one up who creates something that is really truly groundbreaking something that really changes the course of the way hockey manufacturing works in general and right now in my opinion i know who i believe those are i've mentioned it in previous videos but it'd be interesting to see who you think is making the biggest strides in hockey right now in regards to skates now, if we go back literally just a few years back, it was pretty clear which manufacturers were running the industry in terms of not only the amount of player usage in terms of the NHL or other professional leagues and also recreational leagues that were using their products. If you were to look at, for example, like Bauer and you looked at them across the globe, what percentage of players were in Bauer skates, Bauer sticks, Bauer gloves, helmets? That number was much, much higher than what we would see with the other manufacturers that were around back then. Now, one of the big problems we have with hockey right now is it is a little bit of a monopoly industry where there are just a handful of manufacturers creating all of the gear that we use today. Back in the days when there was Easton, there was, I know Graf are kind of still around, but they're not really around anymore. There was MLX, there was numerous brands out there making lots of different products and consumers had so much choice with what they wanted to use. But now over the years, that's really been slimmed down. If it's been through acquisitions like Bauer buying Easton, or just some of these other companies not adapting with times and essentially being phased out. 
that results in only having a handful of brands making the gear that we use today. And that means that now more than ever, it is incredibly competitive to try and figure out which manufacturers are stepping above and beyond in terms of the gear that they produce. Going back a few years, like I said, that was very clearly evident it was Bauer. But in my opinion today, more than any other time in the history of this game, I feel like other manufacturers are doing a lot more in terms of product development and releasing things that are significantly different from what we saw previously. Now, if we're to reference Bauer again, if we look back at, for example, the release of the ultrasonic skates, I still think to date those were one of the best retail skates that were ever produced. Now, in terms of where that ranked for myself, the ultrasonic skates were, in my opinion, the best boot Bauer had ever made to date. Now, of course, we have the Mark skates now. I would say probably the same with that, very similar to the ultrasonic skates. And there is a video of that coming. You guys have been hammering me in the comments for that, and it is coming. But the Mark skates are incredibly similar to the ultrasonics. That's why we didn't really push to get a video out the minute those skates were available. Now, if we look at the Hyperlite range versus the Hyperlite 2, which is going to be dropping later this year, Personally, when you look online, of course, there's leaked pages out there, these leaked catalogs, you can see what's coming. Those particular skates are incredibly similar to what we saw with the original Hyperlite skates. Now, of course, there will be a video on the channel coming when those are essentially ready to be released or when they get announced. We'll drop that video as quickly as we can. Now, when we look at a brand like CCM, same thing could be said if we look back at some of their older skates, the progression from one skate to another over the last couple of years hasn't been anywhere near as significant as it has right now. The FT4 Pro being upgraded to the brand new skate, which is the FT6 Pro, the changes are clear as night and day. The video that I filmed on that that I'll link down below highlights the changes and how many changes they are. When a manufacturer does that, it's a buzz for us because there's actually new stuff for us to share with you. These differences that you might not be able to pick up off of looking at a leaked catalog um, image of these skates or just a random image shared on Instagram with one of these accounts that loves leaking content online. You can't really get the gist of what's been done to the boot until you actually look at a video that breaks down the differences. Now, of course, with that being said, AS4 Pro, which is CCM's other range of skates, I'm going to be very interested to see how they progress even further with that. And I know before you guys even ask, because a lot of comments I've seen say that the FT6 Pro looks very similar to the AS4 Pro. Can we have a video to explain the differences? And comments on the stiffness as well. In Europe, the stiffness of that skate is 215. In North America, it's 195. This is coming directly from CCM. I don't really know exactly why this has been done, but if I do find out in the later videos that we have coming about that skate, I will discuss them clearly and break them down for you in that video. Now, of course, from there, when we look at True, same thing can be said like what I just said about CCM. If we go back just a few years, I felt like a lot of the products that True was releasing were just incrementally better than what they had previously. Now, when we look at the Catalyst range of skates and, of course, the Hazardous range of skates, which we are going to be dropping a video of very, very soon, the changes between those skates and what True has made in the past in terms of retail is clear as night and day. Massive changes in performance, in fit, comfort, design, durability. True's manufacturing process of their retail skates has widely been improved, and it's one of the manufacturers that I think is really leading the industry in terms of the products that they're releasing, of course, along with CCM. If you asked me who is making the best skates right now, I would put True and CCM at the top, and I would put Bauer just below those, and that's not favoritism. If you look at the products, you look at the tech, you hear what players are saying about the comfort, the performance, the general experience players are having in those skates, that is exactly how that ranking should sit right now. And it means that now is a very exciting time to see what manufacturers are going to be doing with their skates. Now, when we come back to what I touched on at the start of the video about this whole idea of originality and that looks like that, these guys are copying these guys. Like I said, it's absolutely necessary and in some cases it's required and it does drive the industry forward because at the end of the day, when a manufacturer takes a recipe that is a winning recipe from another manufacturer, adapts it, repurposes it, and then releases it in their own way, other manufacturers are forced to essentially develop to the next level, which is exactly where consumers like us, players like us, get to benefit with the equipment that we're picking up. I'm completely okay with a manufacturer looking at what another manufacturer has done, developing that, and essentially learning from that company's mistakes their failures, their um, successes, and figuring out how they can best apply that to what they're doing. At the end of the day, we win when that happens. But what I'm not a fan of is when a product gets released and it's very, very similar to what we saw previously, but being marketed as something completely unique, new and different and groundbreaking. That's why we create these detailed tech videos because we wanna break it down and explain the ins and outs, not to share our opinion with you, but so you can have all of the information that you need to decide if the new product is really worth all of the hype that it's receiving in the media.
But as always, this was just a quick one, kind of like a discussion stroke rant about what we were excited to see. I really can't wait to share with you the videos that we have coming on the entire brand new Hazardous line. Of course, the Hyperlite range of skates as well. Looking forward to sharing everything on the Vapor range of skates that's going to be dropping soon. And of course, the FT6 range, Jet Speed range from CCM, looking at the full lineup of skates. We have pretty much all of these skates in the studio right now. We're just waiting for the green light from the manufacturers to be able to share the content with you. But I'm really excited to do that. And before we go, I want you guys to tell me who do you think is leading the game right now in terms of the skates that they're making? And then secondly, who do you think the biggest copycat in hockey is right now in terms of taking tech from another manufacturer and using it in their own products? I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are of that. But as always, guys, big thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. All of the links that you need to see all of the videos that I've touched on in this video will be down below, whether it's the hazardous range, whether it's of course, what we're going to be seeing from Bauer later, or of course, what we're going to be seeing from CCM. All the links will be down below in the video description when those videos are available. But thank you for watching, guys, and take care. Till the next one. Peace.